Chapter 6 The Truth Swanson ordered Amy and Claire to stay in his office while he organized his officers. Judge McIntosh, Lisa's father, was already on a plane with the money. Everybody seemed to be busy doing something to help Lisa. Amy and Claire felt like they were the only ones doing nothing. We've got to do something, Claire, said Amy. Lisa's our best friend. You're right, replied Claire. Before Inspector Swanson came back, they walked out of the police station and into the late afternoon. Which way do you think we should go, left or right? asked Claire, looking down the busy street. Amy wasn't listening. She was looking at the photographs. They looked so happy, it was hard to believe that some of the photos were taken only a few days ago. Why do you think she didn't tell us? Claire turned around and realized that she was talking to herself. Amy, you're not listening to me at all, she complained. Hmm? said Amy, still distracted by the photos. There was something wrong, but she couldn't work out what it was. I said, why do you think Lisa didn't tell us that she has a famous dad? That's it! shouted Amy, making Claire jump. Look! she said, showing the photos to Claire. What? It's just us three having fun. No, look again! insisted Amy. Claire took the photos from her and looked at them closely, but she couldn't see anything unusual. He's on this photo we took in Cairns and this one at Ayers Rock. He's even on photos that were taken before we came to Australia. Look, this one was taken at Heathrow Airport. Who? said Claire. She was starting to get impatient now. Amy wasn't making any sense, and they didn't have time to waste like this. See, here in the background. That's more than a coincidence. Amy was pointing at the figure of a man with black hair in the background of the photos. He's followed us. He's the monster who has kidnapped Lisa, she said angrily. Amy, said Claire, putting a hand on Amy's arm to calm her. I know that face. Jack, interrupted Amy. But she wasn't looking at the photo. She was waving to a man across the street. Jack didn't see Amy. He walked quickly into a newsagent's. I thought he was leaving Sydney, she asked, turning to Claire. But Claire's face was white. You look like you've seen a ghost smiled Amy. Amy, the man in these photos, it's him, it's Jack. Chapter 7 The Kidnapper's Shadow Don't be ridiculous, Claire. Jack's our friend, laughed Amy nervously. But before she looked at the photo again, she knew that Claire was right. Amy felt sick. Lisa liked Jack. She trusted him. They all thought he was nice. Look, he's coming out of the newsagents now, said Claire. I'm going to kill him, said Amy. She wanted to run over to him. But Claire stopped her. No, don't be stupid. If you do that, we'll never find out where Lisa is. Let's follow him instead. We should phone the police, though, said Amy, taking her mobile phone out of her bag. There's no time, said Claire. Come on! They started to follow him south, through Hyde Park, and then east, down Oxford Street. He was walking fast, and it was difficult not to lose sight of him in the busy street. It was still a public holiday, and a lot of people were out, enjoying the early evening sun 
and eating ice creams in the many bars of this lively neighbourhood. Oh, no! said Claire. What's the matter? asked Amy. She was staring at the back of Jack's head as he crossed the road a few steps in front of them. The traffic lights! What traffic lights? said Amy, confused. A tall woman with long brown hair stopped suddenly in front of her, obstructing her view. Amy wanted to push her out of the way. They're red! He's going to get away! said Amy. Forced to stand still and wait, they watched Jack disappear into the crowd. It felt like an hour before the cars stopped and they could walk across the road. It's useless! shouted Amy. We'll never find Lisa! We can't give up now! said Claire. I'm going to the police station! said Amy, refusing to go any further. But then, as she turned to go, she saw him again. Chapter 8 Finding Lisa The house was on a pretty street in Paddington a residential district south of Sydney Harbour, not far from the youth hostel. It was a Victorian house and was identical to all the other houses on that street. Claire and Amy watched as Jack went through the gate and into the house. Once they were certain that nobody was watching them, they walked to the rear of the house and looked through a window. It was very dirty, but they could still see inside. The outside of the house was beautiful, but the inside was horrible. The furniture was ripped and empty tins of food, pizza boxes and cans were on the floor. Lisa was sitting on an old chair in the living room. Her hands were tied and she looked frightened as she watched Jack. He was shouting, and his face was red with anger. For ten years I lived here, alone with my aunt. I couldn't even visit my dad, because he was in prison in England. I'm sorry, I... said Lisa, trying to calm him down. No, you're not. You're not sorry. I am. No, you're sorry that you're not out with your friends, laughing and having fun as usual. Well, what about me? He screamed, out of control. If you let me go, I won't tell anyone about this, said Lisa desperately. Not Claire, not Amy, nobody will ever know. It will be our secret. You're a liar, just like your dad. He screamed, so loud it made Amy and Claire jump. Do you think I could let you go now? After all this time? After all that he's done? My father was innocent. He told me he never did it. He was set up. Claire and Amy listened in silence, too scared to breathe. He looked so different from this kind, funny guy they shared pizza with. This was the real Jack. I have planned this for a long time. I followed you and your stupid friends around Australia, and then you came to Sydney. When you argued with your friends on Bondi Beach, I was there. You knew me from the youth hostel and trusted me, and I could finally put my plan into action. Now your dad is going to pay. I hope he's got the money ready. Otherwise... <laughs> He laughed a mad laugh in Lisa's face before rushing out of the house, locking the door behind him. Amy didn't wait one minute more. She took her mobile phone and dialed the number of the police station. Hello? Can I speak with Inspector Swanson, please? It's Amy Dixon. While Amy waited for Swanson to answer, Claire knocked on the window. Lisa! shouted Claire. Everything's going to be okay. You're safe now. Chapter 9 Happy New Year!
I still don't understand why you didn't tell us about your dad, said Claire. It was New Year's Eve, and Lisa's dad was paying for them to have dinner in an expensive restaurant. From their table, there was a fantastic view of Sydney Harbour and the Opera House. The night sky was full of stars. The nightmare of the past few days was finally over. I wanted you to like me for who I am, not because my dad was a famous judge, said Lisa. Well, I don't care if your dad is a judge or if he cleans the streets. What are you going to order? I can't decide. I'm so hungry, I could eat two of everything, said Amy. We'll order some champagne first, said Lisa's dad. I'm a lucky man. I always worried that something like this was going to happen. It's over now, Dad. Because of Amy and Claire, Jack's in prison and he'll stay there for a long time. I want to get on with my life, said Lisa, and she kissed him on the cheek. What are your New Year's resolutions? asked Amy. I'm going to give up chocolate. After I've tried that delicious looking chocolate cake, said Claire. I'm going to retire, said Lisa's dad. Why? You can't do that. Your job means everything to you, said Lisa, surprised. I've thought about it for a long time, even before all of this happened. I want to spend more time with my family, he said, smiling at Lisa. My New Year's resolution is to remember my money and mobile phone when I go out, <laughs> laughed Lisa. Cheers, laughed Amy, raising her glass. Dinner was delicious, and they all ate too much. Have you thought about what you are going to study at university? he asked. Oh, Dad, don't be boring. It's New Year's Eve. There's lots of time to think about that, said Lisa, suddenly nervous. Your future is very important, he said seriously. I know, but... Lisa knew that joining the police was what she definitely wanted. She also knew that sooner or later she needed to tell her dad about her decision. But she didn't want to ruin this evening. She was having such a good time. Dad, she started. Taking a deep breath, she said the words she knew were going to disappoint him. I don't want to go to university. She avoided his eyes and waited for him to shout that she was making a big mistake. But when he spoke, his voice was warm. I know, he said. What do you mean, I know? Lisa looked at him confused, but he was smiling. I'm your dad. I could see that whenever I talked about university, you looked unhappy. And what's important to me, he said, taking her hand gently in his, is that you're happy. So, can I join the police? If that's what you want, he smiled. Do you mean that? asked Lisa excitedly. She threw her arms around him. Well, if Lisa is going to join the police, then you two could always become private investigators, <laughs> he said, and Claire laughed. I'm serious. You found Lisa before the police did. But the girls were laughing too much to take him seriously. <laughs> Here's to us, Charlie's Angels, laughed Lisa, making another toast. It'll soon be midnight. Shall we go outside with everyone else? At last, the countdown began. Ten, nine, eight, seven, everyone shouted, six, five, Four, three, two, one. Happy New Year! 
Fireworks filled the sky with loud bangs and a beautiful rainbow of colour. Sydney was impressive at any time of year, but the harbour at New Year was unforgettable. Any plans for the future could wait until tomorrow. It was too good here and now.